Hey guys, it's Kate. A bunch of you have been asking me for advice on rosin, so I figured I could answer it two ways. The first way would be to tell you my opinion, and the second way would be to pose the question out to all of you YouTubers. So I figured I'd do both. Um, so I'm going to ask you, what do you guys think is the best rosin out there? And then I'm going to tell you what I think is the best rosin. But I'm only one person of many violinists on YouTube, so I'm sure your opinions will definitely be appreciated. Alright, the first one I'm going to address is the Gold Silver Master Rosin, um, it's a French rosin, Colophane 2000 for vi Violin, Viola, and Cello. I don't know if you could see this. Alright, um, this rosin I actually got it because it was sort of expensive, and I figured I, I should try it because I'm from South Florida, as probably many of you know. And they recommend that in moist climates, you use light rosin because it's really hard on your varnish. Um, so that's why I got this. Now, I didn't really use it a lot, I have to admit. But when I did use it, I didn't really see a difference in the sound for the price that I paid for it. So um, I'm really not going to recommend this to you. Now, I appreciate that it's light and everything, but I really didn't see much of a difference in it. That would be the gold silver. The second one I'm going to recommend to you is your typical dark rosin. Now, as stated before, the climate that I live in is very moist, and I really don't recommend this rosin for two reasons. Number one, when you use dark rosin, not only in moist climates where I live, but also just anywhere, um, if you forget to wipe it off after you practice, it leaves a really bad buildup on your wood. And if you do that for, you know, a week or two, not even in a row, just like the equivalent of like 14 days or something, it is impossible to get off under your bridge and it can do severe damage to your violin. And I always think of it as, yeah, this rosin is probably the least expensive rosin out there, but the amount of money that you spend repairing your violin is significantly greater. So I really don't recommend this for that first reason. And the second reason is because there really isn't an improvement in the sound and it just gets dust everywhere. Like I know if you're playing fiddling or even if you're paying, playing a relief, fast classical piece, it's really hard, you know, to like focus because there's smoke going everywhere. As funny as that sounds, it's totally true. <laughs> and this is this is probably the cheapest that you can get, but even if you're a beginner, I really wouldn't get this. The third I want to introduce to you is Jade. Jade is a very famous rosin. A lot of people love this rosin. I, however, I don't really think it's that amazing. I think people buy it for the name and they don't really buy it because it works well. Jade looks like this. It's green. Interesting. Um, and, you know, if someone really likes Jade, please let me know because I tried probably two cakes of this and I really didn't see a difference in it just because, I don't know, I really didn't find that it was different. But this is made in France. Now, two favorites. One is for solo, one is for orchestral. And you're probably saying, what is the difference? But it actually is a pretty big difference. If you're playing orchestral, you're kind of looking for a sound that's pure, but it's not completely loud and and um, overpowering. And you can probably think, well, maybe you could play a little less, but it's a kind of different sound that you're looking for. And the second one is for solo, which is Definitely, you need to have a really nice sound. The orchestra one that I use, and this is a very rare rosin, I have to get it on specific sites, is the Liebenzeller. If I, I believe this is German made. Liebenzeller comes in different settings like gold one, gold two, gold three, a bunch of different things. I recommend the gold one. That's Liebenzeller. Um, now, I use this so much that it's pretty much in pieces, but I definitely recommend this, just because if you put it on your bow, it'll really give you great sound, and you can tell immediately. And first place for solo is the Andrea Rosin. It's formerly called Paganini, or Paganini. Um, now, a lot of people kind of get confused and think it's two different things, but the, the rosin was actually bought out by the company... Andrea, or I think like maybe they changed the name or something like that, but nevertheless, it's still the same qual quality and product. Um, this stuff is dark rosin, yes, and you have to clean it off, 
but as soon as you put it on your bow and you play with it, you're going to definitely see a difference. Um, these two, Liebenzeller and the Andrea Rosin, are both very expensive, but rosin lasts you years at a time. So you can probably put in maybe like 10 cents a day and put it in a jar and you can save up for this rosin. Um, because I definitely recommend these two. And if you're really going to spend any money on something for violin, it definitely should be on rosin and strings. Um, yeah, make sure also when you um, clean off your violin, you also clean off your bow because rosin can definitely build up on there. And, yeah, I, I mean, I really hope that you guys give input on what you think is the best rosin. And, I mean, if I said something about one of your favorite rosins that you've been playing for years and years with, please defend it and let me know because I'm not the only violinist out there. And, you know, you guys definitely have awesome opinions and I really appreciate them. Thank you for watching and I hope this helped you a little bit and I'll be giving more advice soon.